Welcome to the Cheap Air Gunner channel. I'm Cherokee Steve, and here I have that very inexpensive Chinese chronograph that I had ordered. It was shipped uh, from within the United States, so it came very quickly. Uh, but let's unbox it, so to speak. It's pretty straightforward. I've already opened the box just to make sure that everything that was supposed to be in here is in here. Uh, but it has a manual that is completely in Chinese. So, I think I can figure it out without having to use the manual. You've got the main unit wrapped in bubble wrap. Clamping up here for the barrel or moderator. There's a USB charging cable. It has an ion lithium battery that uh, is a permanent part of the unit. Uh, it just gets charged through the cord. And the only other thing that's in here is a U-bolt plastic bag with a U-bolt and an Allen wrench. From what I understand, the U-bolt is in case you have some large type of moderator on your gun, like a Donnie FL, one of the various uh, moderators that he sells, uh, something like that, that this particular opening would just be too small for. This would go on here. You would use the bottom portion of this. Remove the top and use this in place of the top of the standard clamp to clamp over your large moderator. And like I said, an Allen wrench for the four clamping bolts. Now the first thing that I'm going to do, I have some uh, felt portion of a uh, Velcro kit. I'm going to cut out some pieces and apply them onto the uh, contact areas of the clamping mechanism so that when it is clamped, on the end of a barrel or I have moderators uh, functional or actually you know a couple that are just for appearance sake uh, but that will keep it from marking up the uh, moderator so I'm going to do that and we'll be right back so as you can see the concept is quite simple I figured the KTHBA with its relatively small diameter moderator, the TKO would work well with the uh, smaller clamping mechanism, but it basically, you just snug down the four bolts on the end of your barrel or moderator, in this case moderator, and uh, it's only, it only has one button. It goes through a setup page and uh, it came with a charge on it so uh, hopefully I can get a couple of pellets they're going to pass over 
the sensors here and spit out a reading up here. Now, like I said, that would be in meters per second. So I will have to convert that over to feet per second. But let's see how this works and how it compares to the other chronographs that I have as far as the uh, speeds that it's going to be giving. So I have a 14.66 grain Excite hammer domed pellet loaded up. Two forty five. The display does not stay up there very long, not displaying it to the camera. Two forty four. Eight fifteen on the crony. I'm able to, uh, one of the neat things about this is because it's attached to the barrel, I can simultaneously get a reading off of the Chinese unit itself and shoot over the crani and get a reading off of that. I'm trying to get something on camera as far as the reading on this particular Chinese chronograph before it it doesn't stay up very long it's only a couple of seconds I don't know if I got that or not that was 242 so I'm going to switch off the unit that was 807 over the crani. So I'm going to do some number conversion and get this meters per second over to feet per second and we'll compare it to what the crani uh, gave me at least. I did not have the crani on for the first shot over the, or through the Chinese chronograph. So uh, the last two shots uh, were simultaneously shot through the Chinese chronograph and over the crani. So I have a, a uh, I have two different numbers I can use as far as comparing the Chinese chronograph to the crony chronograph. So after crunching the numbers and doing the conversion from meters per second over to feet per second for the numbers that the Chinese chronograph gave me, it's not going to be real easy to summarize everything. Let's just compare numbers to numbers for right now. So the first shot I took that I had a reading on both the Chinese chronograph and the crani chronograph. The reading on the Chinese chronograph was 244 meters per second. Now that converts over to 800 feet per second. Now that same shot on the crani showed up at 815 feet per second. The next shot I took, as far as the Chinese chronograph, came out at 242 meters per second. Now that calculates out to 794 feet per second. The crani number for that same shot was 807 feet per second. So I am getting a lower velocity number from the Chinese chronograph than I am from the crani chronograph. 
uh, the, the first shot, I had readings for both. The Crani read 15 feet per second faster than the Chinese chronograph. The second shot, the difference was 13 feet per second. Again, the Crani reading faster than the Chinese chronograph by 13 feet per second. So, what I did was I went ahead and set up the Caldwell on top of the Crani chronograph and fired over the Caldwell with the Chinese chronograph hooked up to the KTHPA and simultaneously getting a reading between the Chinese chronograph and the Caldwell instead of the Crani chronograph this time. And the reading I got from the Chinese chronograph was 238 meters per second, which converts over to 781 feet per second. The Caldwell registered a velocity of 789 feet per second. So the Caldwell still, like the Crani, read a faster velocity than the Chinese chronograph. I had disconnected, I'd taken the Chinese chronograph off of the KTHPA, but I cleared out the Caldwell chronograph and did one more shot only over the Crani chronograph. The reading I got was 780 feet per second. Now that kind of makes sense as far as the Crani agreeing with the Caldwell. With the air that was used to do the shot over the Caldwell and losing that pressure from the air system on the KTHPA, the next shot over the Crani went down to 780 from 789, which is something in the ballpark of what I would expect to see, a decrease of nine feet per second. But again, that tells me that the Crani is pretty well set up to read very close to what the Caldwell reads. Regardless of all of that, the one thing that seems to be in agreement is that the Chinese chronograph reads slower velocities than both the Crani chronograph and the Caldwell chronograph. You know, it would be a red flag to me if that last shot came out at the same velocity or slightly higher than what the previous shot was over the Caldwell, I would immediately say, I, you know, I, I don't have the Crani uh, set up to read velocities uh, close to the Caldwell. It's obviously reading too fast, but that really isn't the case. My summary of the whole thing, in my opinion, again, giving the benefit of the doubt of all of these readings to the Caldwell, giving the most credence to the Caldwell chronograph, basically, in summary, what I would do is take shots, if, if I were to use the Chinese chronograph, I would take shots, record numbers, meters per second, and then when I converted those numbers to feet per second, I think a good rule of thumb would be add 10 feet per second to that velocity. And you're gonna be extremely close to what the gun is actually shooting. Now, I really want to put this to the test over a different gun. And what I'm thinking of is 
I've got an air stripper on the end of my Hudson AT44 tact. That's a 25 caliber PCP. And uh, what I'm really curious to see is how the Chinese chronograph will read with a slightly larger caliber and uh, compare it to what the chrony reads. So that's something I will probably do in the near future is pull out the AT44 tact that I haven't had out in quite a while and put some shots over chronographs with that and see how the Chinese chronograph reacts to that. You know, as I said, it's a tw I, I picked up this Chinese chronograph for just a little, for cents over 28 bucks. So for a $28 chronograph, and it's consistently reading. I mean, it went from, in meters per second, I took a total of four shots through the Chinese chronograph. And uh, the first shot read 245. The next shot was 244. The next shot was 242. And the last shot was 238. So, as far as consistency from the Chinese chronograph, definitely I would give it a thumbs up. As far as accuracy of the velocity that it's reading, again, Based on what I just did, my formula would be take the meters per second the Chinese chronograph gives me, convert it over to feet per second, and add 10 extra feet per second to that number. And uh, the reason why I'm making this point is if any of you, you know, really don't want to spend a lot of money on a chronograph, head over to eBay. You could pick one of these Chinese units up for not a lot of money. Everything seems to work as it's supposed to, as far as clamping the way it's supposed to, uh, consistently giving readings. Um, and, uh, you know, if you just want to uh, chalk it up to what I did as far as uh, add 10 feet per second to whatever this reading is and consider that to be the velocity coming out of your gun you can get by with using this one of the major things that I use a chronograph for is to gauge modifications that I've made to a gun If I went about doing something to one of my air guns with the intent of increasing velocity, I definitely want to be able to test it after I've modified it and put it back together and compare the velocities I'm getting at that point to what I was getting before the modifications I made. And regardless of how accurate this particular unit is, you definitely can use that use this unit to gauge increases in velocity or versus decreases. You know, there's always the risk of going through and modifying a gun and doing more damage to it than you did increasing velocity. Uh, air leaks and uh, parts that aren't made it up the way they're supposed to be transfer ports that are upside down or uh, you know you can gauge that with this unit you don't have to spend a hundred dollars or more on a chronograph to utilize the chronograph for gauging modifications and making judgment calls on velocity. From that particular standpoint, you know, 
in summary, I would recommend this chronograph. Uh, for what it costs, it's a nice little unit. That Guys, thanks for checking out this video. That's kind of my summary of the eBay Chinese chronograph. You guys, stay safe and shoot safe.